Hello everyone. I hope you're all well this afternoon. I hope you've been wiggling in your chair and getting a little bit of chair exercise in because the music is playing in the background. We're hoping um, we've got a few more people joining us this afternoon, but we're going to get started because we have got a full agenda this afternoon. So welcome to our April webinar on engaging with children, young people and their families. And we're really pleased to have you with us today to help with sound and quality during the presentation. Um, the, the powers that be have switched off your camera and your microphone. You can use the chat box throughout the webinar and we would encourage you to do so. Um, and we'll pick up any questions and comments that you've got um, in a Q&A session at the end of the session. And we can always then switch the camera and the mic back on if we need to bring you in at that point. We will be sharing the presentation slides and the recording of the webinar on our website after today's session. And you can find out more about our upcoming events uh, in the link that's been posted in the chat box for you. If you have any questions or technical difficulties during the session, please contact Linda. Um, and again, her email address is in the chat box. And um, so without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Karen, one of our engagement officers, who's going to give us some um, an introduction to today's presentation. Karen. Thank you, Sharon. Can I just double check everybody can see the presentation okay? Lots of hands up for you there, Karen. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Okay, so good afternoon, everyone. My name is Karen Rankin, and I'm an engagement officer with Healthcare Improvement Scotland and its community engagement directorate, working in the Tayside Engagement Office. Jenny Gillespie from NHS Tayside's Public Health Directorate and I will be presenting this example of engaging with children, young people and their families to you today. So in Healthcare Improvement Scotland, we've been aware of this work after being asked by colleagues in NHS Tayside to advise on the involvement of stakeholders in the development of a new strategy. We were keen for the project to be shared today because we were really impressed by the use of different, a range of different ways to involve people. How passionate the project team was about involving children, young people and their families throughout the whole process. That the consultation materials, including the survey poster and leaflet, were all first thoroughly tested with parents to check they were clear and understandable before being finalised and the co-production approach taken from the very start of the process of developing a new strategy. So I thought it would be really useful to provide some background in the project. So back in 2017, the three community planning partnerships in Tayside published the Tayside Plan for Children, Young People and Families. The plan was developed to reduce inequalities and improve outcomes for all children living in Tayside. The vision being that our children and young people are physically, mentally and emotionally healthy. A priority of the plan was to develop a child healthy weight strategy for Tayside. And in 2018, the Scottish Government published A Healthier Future, Scotland's Diet and Healthy Weight Delivery Plan, which set an ambition to have childhood obesity by 2030 and to significantly reduce diet-related health inequalities. This aligned with the priorities in the Tayside Plan, which was published the previous year. So from the beginning of the strategy development, the team, which was led by Dr Joyce Thompson, a dietetic consultant and public health nutrition, who has since retired, um, wanted to ensure children, young people and families and the wider community were all involved in developing the strategy. This began with a full day event where around 100 representatives from the public, private, third sector and communities were invited to participate in the initial development of the new strategy. It featured presentations and discussions on a number of related topics in order to generate ideas to help inform the strategy and identify the next steps. From that event, five key themes emerged. And over the following months, these themes were tested, revised and retested with various community groups. In 2019, Healthcare Improvement Scotland Community Engagement was invited to sit on a newly formed strategy 
consultation planning group to provide advice for the involvement of stakeholders in the consultation phase of the new strategy. An engagement, and uh, sorry, an equality impact assessment and communication and engagement plan were then completed to ensure wide and meaningful engagement across side. And in 2019, a public consultation was held with the aim of ensuring all stakeholders, including children, young people, families and the wider community, had an opportunity to help establish the priority actions needed to address the five key themes mentioned earlier. A consultation leaflet and poster were developed and tested with parents to check they were clear and understandable. And you can see a picture of the consultation poster here on the slide. A short film was also produced that described what child healthy weight is, the situation in Teesside and why there is a need for action. So the event back in 2017 that was mentioned earlier was a catalyst for change and sparked the development of a plan to drive change and started us on the journey to the co-creation of the strategy. With the first step being this wider engagement with people who were not represented at the event. And what we really wanted to show now to give you a flavour of what this first event um, was about, is going to show you a short film here. The film lasts about a minute. so. So I don't know if you noticed there, but in the film it spoke, spoke about a service safari where people were asked to walk in the shoes of children and young people when trying to find healthy options um, in the local area. So that was one interesting way that was used to um, engage people in the initial discussions about the, the new strategy. So a variety of, of activities were undertaken to ensure wide stakeholder involvement, including the public stakeholder event mentioned earlier, you saw the film um, about that. The priorities identified at the earlier stakeholder event were the basis for a consultation survey, which was piloted at community events before refining the questions. Online and paper versions of the survey were available and widely circulated, with 1,410 people completing the survey, many of whom were children and young people. Team members attended the community events, local community events at weekends and evenings, such as summer fates and family fun days, to encourage children, young people, parents, grandparents, and anybody else that was interested in sharing their views and suggestions through the survey. The team during these events also supported some of the people to fill the survey in. Also raising awareness of the consultation was done through a variety of ways, including use of social media, press releases in local newspapers, interviews on local radio, dropping off posters and flyers at local nurseries, primary schools, community centres and libraries. And community groups and partner organisations were asked if they would send the details through their contact distribution lists. And you'll see these different methods in the word cloud on the top right of the slide here. 
Healthcare Improvement Scotland's community engagement and public health colleagues from NHS Tayside co-facilitated co three discussion groups. We worked with a local school and local third sector organisations who helped us to identify people to take part. Going to where people were, we, our first session was with 10 senior students at a local secondary in Dundee. The second session was at the Dundee International Women's Centre with 18 women, many of whom didn't have English as their first language. Centre staff and volunteers supported us by translating for any of these women, almost all of whom were either parents or grandparents, who needed it and helping us to write some of the women's feedback on leaves. The third session was with 17 young people from a local youth group in Perthshire. And for these sessions, we used an interactive engagement tool called Ketso to ask participants key questions in relation to the priority actions, to write down their comments and ideas on special leaves, which were used to create clusters of ideas. And you can find out information about Ketso in our participation toolkit on our website, and we'll put the link in the chat for you. The use of a creative engagement tool encouraged wide discussion, including about the barriers children, young people and parents face to healthy eating and exercise. It generated many comments and suggestions of what could be done to encourage healthy weight in children. And all of this was collated and shared with the strategy development team. Each of these sessions also gave a really good opportunity for our public health colleagues to share information and answer questions on healthy eating. And all of the feedback received during the consultation directly informed the development of the final strategy called Helping Tayside Children and Young People to Feel Great and Ready to Learn, which was formally launched in June 2021. So what we thought would be really useful as well is to show you a video here. It's a four minute video, um, but it gives a really good overview of the strategy. So I'll play that now.
Okay, so um, during the the pre one of the previous slides um, mentioned some of the community events that some of our, our colleagues in public health went along to. So this is a, a picture and a tweet from one of these um, commu community events in Dundee, the Fintry Gala, which some went along to. And as you can see, um, 50 plus leaflets um, were shared and, and many people com completed the, the survey. Also, these are some of the photos of the council sessions. And you can see the leaves there mentioned earlier to capture the comments and ideas that people made. And this is just a small selection of the comments and suggestions made during these three council sessions. I'll just give you a few seconds here to read these before we now move on to the next slide. And I think and maybe Linda and the, the kind of team here can can answer it, but I think we'll maybe in this presentation afterwards. So it would give you the chance to look at any of these any of these comments in, in more detail then. Okay, so I'm just going to pass on now to Jenny, who's going to take us through the next part of the presentation. Thanks so much, Karen. It's great to be here this afternoon. And just to um, say again, my name is Jenny Gillespie and I'm a Senior Health Promotion Officer um, within the Public Health Director at NHS Tayside. And it was really great for me to be working alongside Karen, Claire and colleagues on this consultation a few years ago, including the use of the Quetzal tool, which was always lots of fun with young people. Um, I'm going to share some of my insights into how the consultation process back then in 2019 helped shape our strategy. And I'll also go on to describe how we are currently implementing the strategy. So back in 2018, the public stakeholder event, as Karen said, was really the catalyst to us kickstarting our journey, which is now a five year journey. It gave us a starting point because those who attended the event identified the five key features of local action that they felt was required to address high population levels of childhood obesity. And these are listed on the slide on the left hand side. From the details provided around these key features, we knew that there was an enthusiasm to focus efforts on children, young people and families and to address the wider environment less of a focus on individual level behaviour change or responsibility. And these were the themes that formed the basis of the framing of the consultation process to help create a shared understanding of the issue with wider stakeholders and to facilitate commitment to the ambition to reduce population levels of childhood obesity. And that came through in the short film that um, Karen has just played. This took place over the summer of 2019. On the right hand side of this slide here, what you see that is a, a task and finish group report. Um, and this was formed to consider all the output from the discussions and the online survey that took place over the summer. And as Karen had mentioned, 1400 people completed this online survey. The majority of the respondents were female, 87%. 50% lived in Dundee with 26% from Perth and Kinross and 24 from Angus. The majority of the respondents um, were aged 19 to 45 years old and 8% of the respondents were children or young people. So what that means is over 100 of our local children and young people were able to put their views across with regard to what they wanted their local childhood, uh, child healthy weight strategy to look like. So a multi-agency strategy writing group was compiled and we developed a draft strategy document based on the insights gained from this consultation. If you can move to the next slide, please, Karen. The strategy writing group consists of third sector, NHS, local authority, and crucially, community health workers. They were the link to the voice of local people for us. And together we co-developed a draft strategy with four key ambitions at that stage that are listed on the bullet points on the right hand side here. And this was put out for consultation to sense check the content. And this was now around late 2019. So on the left hand side here, what we can see is the second consultation report. So this was feedback gained from the actual draft strategy that we had developed, which was finalised in February 2020. We had 43 individuals, teams, services and organisations from our local area responding, and that included those from Health and Social Care Partnership, Community Planning Partnership, Local Authority, NHS and Third Sector. 
They included responses from children and family services, public health, family nurse partnerships, secondary schools, justice departments, inequalities teams, education services, and crucially, responses from parents, carers, and members of the public. If you can move to the next slide, please. We found the responses were generally supportive of our proposed and draft vision and strategy. Um, yet there were sensitivities around the term healthy weight. It is a sensitive subject and a sensitive topic. Almost everyone strongly agreed or agreed with the calls to action for ambitions one to four. Of the less than 5% who disagreed with some of the content of our draft strategy, comments and suggestions were offered. And the key themes of those comments and suggestions are listed on the left hand side of the slide here. So there was a feeling by some people that there need to be a more explicit mention of physical activity. Others felt that partnership working should come through stronger. And then for many, there was an issue around about uh, in, in making sure that there was um, long term food insecurity was um, represented within the strategy. And crucially, note that this is pre COVID and pre cost of living crisis. That theme is still coming through. The importance of community engagement and empowerment was recognised. And finally, there was a sense and an acknowledgement that addressing child healthy weight was everyone's business, not just the NHS. And the quotes that you can see on the right hand side of this slide really are just linked to these themes. Direct quotes from what people were telling us mattered to them. General comments we got were also around about the opportunities that many people felt the strategy offered in terms of alignment with other priorities across across Tayside. And for example, um, alignment and um, opportunities linked to the child poverty plans that were taking place as well. So if you can move on to the next slide, please. Next, we sought the views of young people from Dundee in focus groups with Dundee Youth Council. What we wanted to know was their views on the draft strategy and generally about how difficult or easy it is to be healthy within Dundee. They told us about the realities for them. They acknowledged that it was important to have this strategy, but that social media, mental health and local food environment were barriers to them being to be able to be as healthy as they can be. So we're now in early 2020 and we had we were now at the last push to try and finalise the strategy that reflected both scientific evidence base, but also considered the public engagement that we had been undertaken in the previous 18 months. So nothing's plain sailing uh, and of course COVID hit. And also we had the retiral of um, our dietetic consultant who had been driving this agenda forward for many years. Next slide, please. Despite this, uh, by the summer 2020, we had the Tayside strategy written and included the name itself, which was shaped by the views and the opinions of local stakeholders. Our strategy was now called Helping Tayside Children and Young People to Feel Great and Ready to Learn. And there were five key ambitions shown on this slide. We also had 13 calls to action. COVID and associated readjustments meant that the strategy was not then launched until the following year at an online interactive event in June 2021. We made sure that our strategy launch event was accessible to as many people as possible, including all of those who had provided their contact details to us during the consultation process. They were invited to attend our event and we had 60 participants joining in. Next slide, please. At the launch event, we used Menti to get feedback from attendees and we also split them into breakout rooms to hear their views on the calls to action in the, form, in the format of a carousel of discussions and we used Jamboard to capture some of their views. So as well, we asked attendees to feedback on the running of the event and, and asked how they would like to be kept informed about the development of the strategy. So on the left hand side is just a snapshot there that, I did, that shows that um, some of our respondents to the um, feedback said that they would like maybe um, to be kept informed about the strategy development in the form of a newsletter. So we now have a quarterly newsletter which is circulated to our stakeholders via email and also shared online and on social media and things. And our newsletter is called Growing Up Healthy in Tayside. And I think I'm currently writing version seven of our uh, newsletter. Now, for the final few slides, I just wanted to share what has been happening in the almost two years since the launch of our strategy. How have we actually been implementing this? So running in parallel to the development of the strategy, 
and the consultation was the fact that in 2019, Dundee, one of the three local authority areas within NHS Tayside, was identified as one of the Scottish government's early adopter areas of a whole systems approach to diet and healthy weight. Despite no funding allocation coming with this offer, it did bring welcome training. And we were lucky to have been supported um, with um, Leeds Beckett University on Public Health England whole systems approach to obesity guide, which is shown in the top right hand corner of the slide. And we also have ongoing support from national partners, including a national coordinator hosted within Obesity Action Scotland. The six phase methodology that you can see on the slide here enables us to operationalise the strategy ambitions through this whole systems approach. And this process is actually currently being evaluated as well so that we can take the learning from that and apply that within other areas within um, Tayside. So they enabled, this enabled us to establish a working group. In our case, that was made up of two members of the Public Health Directorate team and a member of a Children and Family Service within Dundee City Council. We have a governance group and that monitors the progress and we have subgroups that now take forward key actions using a learning and improvement approach. We developed a website to capture and describe each step in this six phase process and we'll uh, be able to put that in the chat function for you as well. If anybody would like to hear more about how we are operationalising this strategy through whole systems approach, please feel free to contact me after the webinar. My contact details will be available. So next slide, please. So the strategy and our whole systems approach methodology guides us in progressing key actions that matter to local people. So I've picked just one example to share with you um, of a positive and, and tangible outcome um, in terms of how our strategy has progressed. And this one here is just the, the development of a new community playing growing space within the east end of Dundee. Our wider engagement work contributed to helping make this happen for local people and the local community. So finally, and in summary, just to say um, that some of the key points and learnings from our uh, approach over the last few years has been that social media, especially Twitter, helped raise awareness of our online survey. The use of creative engagement tools such as Ketso worked really well in encouraging discussions, particularly with young people who engaged really well with that. Attendance at community events and chatting face to face when we were able to pre-COVID with people was really, really valuable and encouraging those who may not otherwise have done so to, to, to share their views and to help shape our strategy. And whilst COVID forced us to adapt and continue engagement in different ways, this time online, it delayed the launch of the strategy, but the pandemic also reinforced that there has never been a more important time to help Tayside's children and young people to feel great and ready to learn. And I think the last slide is just some contact details for you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jenny and Karen, for that presentation. That's been great. Thank you. Without further ado, I'm going to pass now to Sandra Bowne, who's going to talk to us this afternoon about inspiring young voices. Sandra. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, speaking to you from um, near Ullapool in the Highlands today, so I'm delighted to be here with you all. Um, it was originally meant to be my colleague Emma Thomas, who does all of the direct work with our children and young people, who was coming to speak to you today, but Emma was unable to make it, so I am the absolutely honoured and proud to be able to share some of the work of, of Emma with uh, and the Inspire Highland group. So I am just going to share my presentation um, with you now. It's just hopefully coming. Can you see that? Can yes, we can. Me? You can. Wonderful. So I'm going to um, speak to you then, tell you a little bit about um, how Emma and our Inspire Highland group of young people are have over the past three years been developing a collective voice for people aged 12 to 25 in Highlands who are facing diverse types of challenges in their lives. Um, 
it's really all about supporting um, the young people to speak out about the issues that, that, that they are facing, that they want to speak out on in the way that they want to and get the results that they seek. So very much um, inspired by hearing what Karen and Jenny were talking about there in terms of the young people's involvement and also following up on the impact that all of that input has had. That is exactly the same sort of inspiring example that I'm hoping to share with you here today. So as it says here, Inspire Highland is all about about fun first and foremost, um, but it is also about being creative um, and it is all about youth led participation. So I thought I would just spend a, a little moment um, before going on any further, just to unpack this idea of, of participation and youth led participation. People quite rightly often ask when, when we talk about participation, they quite rightly ask participation in what? What is it you're talking about? So essentially, when we talk about participation, children and young people's participation, we're talking about their meaningful involvement in decision making of all kinds. Those can be decisions which directly affect them as an individual or as a member of a community, but also taking part, just as the example that Karen and Jenny have just shared, taking um, part in decisions um, about service design, improvement, development of all kinds. Um, so that's what we mean when we talk about participation. Children and young people's participation is not one size fits all. It's not just one thing. It can take many, many different forms and, and often needs to. It's of, it's of benefit to be uh, in different uh, shapes and forms sometimes. Um, so some of you might be um, familiar with this diagram. It's Roger Hart's Ladder of Participation. I'm sure many of you are familiar with that. This simply describes um, different types and levels of participation involving children and young people. And there are eight rungs on this ladder, um, right from actually rungs one, two and three can't really be considered to be meaningful participation. These are situations where, for example, children and young people are, are manipulated or they're asked for their opinion, but without knowing why or what's going to be done with that information. So it's really only rungs four and above that we can talk about as in terms of meaningful participation. So right from um, situations where you know there might be a survey and young people are consulted, all of these are valid forms of participation, right up to rung seven and eight, where we're talking really about youth-led initiatives aimed at um, enacting change or indeed co-production, so genuinely joint decision-making between um, decision-makers, adult decision-makers and young people. Um, so generally, as I say, we talk about participation being above that red line, um, but below it, not really. This is tokenism at, at best below the red line. So I just thought I would say a little word about that before going on. So essentially, participation is all about ensuring that children and young people's voices are raised, so supporting the raising of those voices on issues that they want to speak out on. Um, they are listened to and crucially acted upon this part. We're getting better at ensuring that children's voices are raised. We're getting better at listening, but we're not always so good at actually doing something about what children and young people have told us about and then feeding back to the children and young people that we have consulted to tell them what we've done. Um, so it really needs to be this whole cycle. So it is very much linked to the concept of voice, as I've mentioned. It's about young people raising their voices. Now, some young people's voices are very loud. Some are very, very quiet. Um, some voices are expressed in ways that we might not instantly like or, or, or engage with and others are utterly adorable. We have to be ready to listen to and act on them all, um, no matter how they are expressed. There are lots and lots of different ways that children and young people can participate in decision making. Um, some of these are to do with using your actual voice. So in a conversation, speaking at a meeting, speaking, doing a presentation like this, for example. But there are also very many creative ways in which children and young people's voices can be raised. And we need to also be able to embrace all of those methods. Um, we, we had a brilliant example of um, what we would call a consultation. So many young people involved in that 1400 or something like that. that is, that's incredible. Um, that is a, an example of, of how children and young people's voices can indirectly, they, through the creation of a report, then go on to effect a lot of change. But I think what Emma would like me most to say about Inspire Highland is the decision was taken that Inspire Highland would be about enabling the direct voices, 
not saying that there's not a place for the representation of children and young people's voices in many shapes and forms, but Inspire Highland are all about taking those young people directly in some way or another to decision makers so that their voices can directly influence change. Um, so that's what they're about. So now I'm going to just give you a little bit of a whirlwind tour of Inspire Highland, what they are about, um, why they were established, and share with you some examples of how they have approached youth-led um, creative participation. So here we go. So Inspire Highland have been going strong for over three years now. They are a group of people living in Highland with diverse um, experiences, diverse challenges in their lives. Um, the sentences there sum up some of the things that um, the children and young, the young people, sorry, involved in Inspire Highland have said about who they are, what they're for and why they value um, being part of the group. So it's all about making change happen, moving things forward directly um, themselves. And they do talk about the um, friendliness of the group, how um, communication and relationships are at the centre of that and that it's a space where they can and I, and I heard Karen and Jenny mentioning this as well, speak out and not feel judged. It's a space where they can absolutely be themselves. Um, and these are some of the things that the young people tell us about. So how did it all start? Well, I'm going to give a little bit of background um, to how it all came about. Um, at the time, our organisation, Inspiring Young Voices, was called the Highland Children's Forum. And we had been working for about 10 years already in terms of um, the consultation with children and young people at that time mostly focused on children and young people with disabilities and additional support needs on the issues that 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 they that that were important to them we would consult we would write reports we would in, seek to influence change that way so that's that's just it's not a criticism of of the organization that's just the way the world was at that time that is how you had to go about doing things but actually what we found unlike the example that you've just had from from karen and jenny this morning we found that very often nothing happened as a result of the reports that we would write or the surveys that we would gather and indeed decision makers would come back to us time and time again with the same question can you consult children and young people on this and we would say well we did that we gave it to you 18 months ago um so at this point, um, enter Emma, <laughs> who, who came to the organization with a background in um, children and young people's mental health work and with an absolute conviction that change happens much more effectively as a result of hearing the direct voices of children and young people rather than reading a report created by workers in an organization. Um, so that was her um, conviction. It took a little while to convince the organization and one of the um, key turning points that actually made us shift away from consultation into direct participation um, is this little story it's worth sharing with you because it illustrates really well um, the point that um, Inspire Highland is all about, uh, which is the effectiveness of those direct voices. So. Um, Highland Children's Forum had written six reports over a period of five years, all on the topic of the challenges that young people with complex additional support needs face when they're transitioning from children's services to adult services. This was a big gap in Highland at the time. Five years later, six reports down the line, actually nothing at all had changed. And Emma said, please let me take some young people directly into the council chamber. Give me 15 minutes to talk to the councillors, for them to talk to the councillors directly. They did that. And at the end of those 15 minutes, the groundwork was already laid for what is now the joint transitions team, which is still um, up and running in Highland. So that is just a, a lovely example of just how effective it can be to have those voices heard directly by decision makers. And obviously this was the green light for Emma to then go ahead and say, right, we're gonna do this. So on a very cold night in December um, in Inverness in 2019, the first group of Inspire Highland young people got together and started to think about um, what it was they wanted to do and effectively Inspire Highland was born. So in these initial sessions, the young people thought about what their, the purpose of the group would be, the reasons why they wanted to do this. Um, here are some of the things that they um, said at that point, then you'll see, you'll be able to, to see the slides um, afterwards as well. But these are some of the key drivers for wanting to create the group at the time. They developed their collective advocacy approach. So the idea that collectively 
voices are stronger than individual voices so they get together and they speak out collectively on issues and they they under they they defined the values that would underpin the approach of the group that is still uh, the way that things happen to this day and we just captured some of the ideas some of the values there some of the quotes from the young people um, about how things work in Inspire Highland. So obviously as well they had to create a logo so they created a logo got some hoodies and were absolutely ready to go they even tried it out on um, some of the more canine members of the group, as you can see, that's 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 splashy there, modelling the the um, hoodie there. But so this, if you remember, this started in December 2019. This took place in the springtime of 2020, and of course lockdown hit. Um, so we had to then switch to a digital methods of connecting the young people, and the staff had to learn all of, as as happened everywhere. Staff had to learn how to do things digitally. We did that, and actually this approach worked really, really well for Inspire Highland. And the group the group rapidly grew to about 30 strong, which is roughly the same number of people. It is growing. Um, again quite quickly now but we still have around 30 members um of of inspire highland um three years later some of them are the same but a lot of them are new um so um emma and the young people think of inspire highland have come to think of inspire highland as a tree um so the roots of inspire highland are the organization that supports them so inspiring young voices the trunk represents um, the whole group, the whole Inspire Highland group, all 30 of them. Um, and there, I'll tell you in a moment about how the whole group gets together and, and does that nourishing thing where they, where they sort of feed off each other's ideas. So the trunk is the whole group in all its diversity, but then the branches are the themes that the young people have decided they want to explore um, and, and campaign on. Um, so you'll see, you'll see the branches here um, things to do with autism neurodiversity a mental health group so these branches are changing slightly now um, as as issues arise as the membership changes and we're just about to add a couple of well we've in we've already begun to grow a couple of new branches around the support of um, young people from the lgbtq plus community young asylum seekers and refugees who are living in highland and um, so these change and evolve like the, the branches of a, an actual tree would um, but then we have the leaves which are the actual results of all of their activity they are the the campaigning resources, they are the products, they're the changes um, that actually the young people have brought about. And you'll be able, when you get the slides, you'll be able to, to see those. They're a little bit small, um, but there's all sorts of wonderful fruits and, and, and creations that have come um, as a result of all that the young people have done and um, supported by Emma over the past three years. So I'm just going to go through now some examples of the creative methods of campaigning and raising awareness that the group has been engaged in. There's just a list of some examples here of some of the things that the young people have done, but I'm going to give you a few examples. So I mentioned before the trunk, the times when the whole group comes together. Um, so that happens in, in fortnightly Zoom meetings. We have our what we call our main Inspire Highland meetings once a fortnight where any of the young people can come along and have a great old conversation. But then quarterly, at least four times a year, we have what we call our big days out. Um, so we go somewhere fun. It can be the beach. It can be roller bowl. It's very often indoor bowling. Actually, it's all it's chosen by the young people and they quite often yep, head for the bowling alley. Um, these are times when the group gets together and they it's 50% fun and food, and it's 50% hard work, campaign planning, what are we going to do next? What are we going to do in the, in the coming weeks and months? And they sit down and they, they thrash it out together. So those are our big days out. Uh, some of our young people don't like the noise. So we've recently created what they've called our chilled days out, which is the same idea, but in a quiet space. So some of the young people really do not like the noise of a bowling alley. So we've been having lovely chilled days out as well um, um, in quieter spaces. That's I think from Halloween pumpkins give it away. Um, so an example of the way that Inspire Highland works, a great example is, is the life and adventures of Angus the autism bear, who you can see here on the left with his creator, Hayley. Um, Hayley is one of our autistic young people who just had 
she just had an idea that she wanted to raise awareness of the idea that everybody living with autism is an absolutely unique individual with a unique set of skills. She was a bit sick of being pigeonholed, a bit sick of being stereotyped. And she just sort of wondered how she would do it. And she drew a picture of a bear of many colors and the many colors represents that individuality and the diversity among neurodivergent young people. And so Angus started off as a drawing. He then became badges, which are taken around everywhere to begin conversations. They're part of every conversation we have. We made Angus stickers, Angus mugs. We've now all got Angus mugs. People can buy them. It's a, wee, it's a way to, to fundraise as well. And this all came from the group's input to Haley's original idea. Um, Angus now has met, I don't know if any of you know, any of you who can recognize the per person in the middle is doing really well. That is Tom Stoltman. He's the world's strongest man. He lives in Allness in the Highlands and he is also autistic. And he was absolutely honored to, to meet Angus and is a great um, ambassador for talking about neurodiversity. So Angus and he met at the Inverness Highland Games last year. Um, we've now got an Angus calendar. Angus calendar is distributed far and wide. It also can, can raise a few funds for us. It's a picture of Angus doing all sorts of activities, again, representing just the richness of life um, for, for everybody, including people living with autism. So that's just an example. Angus also turned into, or has turned recently into uh, both an audio and a picture book designed for primary school children. And it tells the story of Angus's first day at school. And some of the challenges that are there for, for neurodiverse young people going into school for the first time. Um, Award-winning author and poet Jen Hadfield, who's in the yellow coat there in the middle of the left-hand picture, helped us to write it, helped the young people to, to write it and record the audio version of the book. Um, and we're now busy getting it all illustrated and it's going to be available for schools. Um, initially, I, I guess in principle across Highland, but if any of you work in primary schools and want to have a copy of the audio book um, or the ebook, then do let me know. You would be more than welcome. It's a wonderful story. So that's just an example of how a very simple idea with the group's input and the support of Emma grew into a many tentacled campaign, which has actually already resulted in a resource for primary schools, which could change the way that other children and teachers uh, think, think about and understand the experience of someone living with autism going to school for the first time. So that's just an example. Here are some other examples. These The guys doing some street art at Nairn um, Book and Arts Festival. They wanted to talk to the people passing by in the street and engage them in a conversation about mental health and feelings. And so people were encouraged to do drawings or write anything on the pavement that, that represented how you know they were feeling. Um, Rosie on the right hand side took some cakes to her own secondary school to talk to the other students about what it was like to be a student living with a disability, but the cakes were very much the catalyst for the conversations and she's a wonderful baker. Um, there was a group of young people in Grant and Grammar School who decided to create some training for their own teachers, all about, again, it was a, a group of speaking about neurodiversity in the classroom and how they could be better supported and they ran CPD sessions for their own teachers in their school. Um, some of our young people have been looking, exploring how virtual reality can improve the experience of young people in meetings. So we're thinking we've 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 looked at it in the context of um, children's hearings and we've looked at it in the context of child's plan meetings within schools, both of which can be quite daunting, you know, to go into a very official space with so social workers, teachers, police. Could that actually be a better experience for every? body in virtual reality. You can be more yourself if you don't have to be yourself. You can be an avatar. You can speak while you're rock climbing. You can speak while you're playing basketball or throwing tomatoes at one another. So we're, we're exploring that um, with a few folk in Highland at the moment. This is Jody. She created these wonderful postcards, which she called disability doodles. And they look at the positive side of living with a long term condition or a disability. And these are, again, distributed far and wide. Um, we have a lovely little group who call themselves the I Inspire group. So that's EYE Inspire group. It's a group of young people with sight loss um, and they explore again, raise awareness of some of the challenges of living with sight loss. And so one of their campaigns, the two right hand photographs, they invited members of the public in Inverness city centre to lose their sight um, and, 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 and walk around without seeing anything and just understand some of those difficulties. The High Vis Hoodies campaign is a fabulous success story um, where 
people with sight loss were saying we can't find our friends in the playground and the schools um some of the schools were saying okay well we'll give you some high-vis waistcoats but the children were like oh god no they're not cool we don't want to wear them and so uh the young people themselves came up with the idea of very cool high-vis hoodies and and the the friends lapped that up and, and really loved that idea um so we're now speaking to other schools and in fact to the, to the highland council to see if that that can be made available to anyone who wants it um in in the playground so um another theme and i'm getting to the end here another theme is to raise awareness of disability sports so we hold events where we invite the public to come and take part um so our this is our recent gold ball event in dingwall where the good folk of dingwall were invited to put on a blindfold and come and have a shot it was great fun um but it's all about raising awareness so the last thing i'll tell you about is a wonderful campaign run by this young woman in the photograph here called shona shona has a very very rare um condition called neiman picks disease um, a genetic condition and she wanted to raise money for children in need because they were doing some work around this condition um and she wanted to to fundraise for that that was her campaign and so this was lockdown time and so Shona and uh, nine other um, Inspire Highland young people decided that they would use, they would turn their daily walks around their garden or up their street into a virtual walk and be every single one of them by by doing it that way they ended up walking from the distance from Nairn to John O'Groats. They called themselves Perspire Highland, which was an absolute stroke of genius. The logo suddenly developed little sweaty people walking around the edges and we're hoping that we can find an excuse to resurrect inspire highland we're, we're looking at doing that they raised over 400 pounds for children in need doing that so again there's just some examples for you our young people make lots and lots of videos it's all about their direct voice they like making films they like speaking out directly so we have a youtube channel and um, just go to youtube type in inspire highland you'll find them all there but i just wanted to end by giving you um a quick example of one of these videos. So I'm just going to play it for you and hope that you will be able to hear it. Sandra, I'm just wondering, I'm very mindful of time. I wonder if we could just send the link out to people. Because sure. um, I'd quite like to be able to get a couple of questions in before we finish up, if that's OK. Absolutely, I'll stop sharing. Yes, Thank I you will so send much. That link. I'll put it in the chat box just now while you're um, doing that. That's great. Thank you, Sandra. And sorry to have to cut you short. I, I am mindful that we've got just a couple of minutes left. I'm going to bring my lovely colleague Wendy in now. And uh, just if there are a couple of questions that we can get answered this afternoon, Wendy. Absolutely. Yeah. Just just overall, lots of heart emojis, positive feedbacks in the chat for the speakers today. So fantastic. Couple of questions. Um, the technical ones have already been answered. So thanks to our uh, dream team for that. The first one um, I want to touch on is from Rosie Tyler Gregg, who recognises the the far reaching engagement. Um, and, and I think at this point, if I could just ask, I've just noticed, I don't know if the speakers have got their cameras switched on. Um, if the yeah, if they can switch back their cameras, that would be great. Yeah, so Rosie has asked, and I think this is predominantly for Karen and Jenny. So she's recognised the far reaching engagement and has asked if you've got any sense of the diversity of participants in terms of characteristics like ethnicity and disability, where there's a higher incidence of poverty. Do you want me to come in on that first, Karen? Yeah, um, yeah really, really good question. Um, and in short the answer is no and i think it's a limitation um of our of our, of our sort of question in our survey um we didn't from memory ask anything about ethnicity we were interested in characteristics such as a age and area of tayside um that people were um completing the survey from and also the because it was targeted um for some people uh, who are workers who work within communities just to get a sense of where their background was so we uh, ask questions like that so um but definitely something that we could um obviously improve on the next time i would say karen i know we did a health and uh, inequalities impact assessment and i'm not sure whether that was covered in there can't quite remember yeah we mentioned it um in the presentation but yeah that was done um kind of quite early on 
in the process. Okay, now there's a few other questions, um, but in the interest of time, what we'll do is we'll take those questions offline and we'll share those with the presenters. We've got contact details for everybody um, who's attending today, so we can certainly feed back the responses. But I certainly don't want to uh, <clears throat> make you feel left out, Sandra. So um, in terms of this very quick fire question round, there's a, there's a kind of bonus question embedded from Kimberly. Um, so I'm going to open this up to you all. So Kimberly's asked, what would be your main piece of advice and your top tip for starting engagement? If I can come in there. Um, I think mine would be to remember you've got two ears and only one mouth. So you re that means listening is twice as important as speaking. Um, so it is about listening um, more than anything. And it is realizing actually that it's a very big culture change to hand over much of the decision making to young people and just go with it. It's great. It takes you to better places. Excellent. Thanks, Sandra. Jenny, Karen, do you want to come in? Karen? Yeah, I was just going to say, um, starting to involve people right away. So it's a very early um, stage in the in the process, and and that is something that happened with the child healthy weight strategy in Teesside, which is which is another reason why um, we really wanted to share the example today. We saw the um, the event, we, we had the video of the event, and you could see people being involved. I think the reporter said that it was um, professionals, but there were um, public members um, who were there as well. So. So right from the beginning um, of the um, development of the strategy, like people were involved and they were all the way through and still are, as Jenny um, was talking about towards the end of the presentation. So that's really important. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. OK, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm sorry it's been a very, very quick fire round, but I'm going to pass back to Sharon now. Thank you. Thanks, Wendy. So thank you very much, everyone, for joining us today. Um, we will, as we've said throughout, today's session be putting the presentations and the recording from today's session onto the website. We'll also get your questions asked and answered as well. And um, I'm hoping that there's going to be some questions that will appear on the screen just now, and that just helps us for future planning. So if you could take just a second or so to answer these questions, that would be great. In the meantime, our next webinar will be on Wednesday, the 24th of May at 2 p.m. And the subject for that will be what matters to you, turning ideas into purposeful action. And we've got a link to the website there. Uh, thanks, Stu. Uh, so please go on and register your interest in that next May webinar. Thanks very much for joining us this afternoon and enjoy the rest of your day.